Welcome home, Raiders. Tonight, we're finally back after a couple of weeks, and man, a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, let's see, the Mythic Race to World First, Black Temple Time Walking, Patch 7.3 updates, and that's just in WOW! So stick around as Convert to Raid presents the Battle.net News. Everybody from the Battle.net News broadcast bunker in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Today is uh, what day is it? July 11th, 2017, and it is now 10:08 in the PM. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for joining us from around the Blizzard universe. My name is Pat Crane. I am the host of this Ding Dang Show, and as always, the players are here. Uh, first up, from Lords of the Storm, which is a podcast about Heroes of the Storm. It's Gizmo! Hey, Pat, I am hungry. Do you know what I'm hungry for? Uh, is it a burrito? A burrito, but <laughs> also <laughs> some content. And we have plenty of that. So grab your sporks Ooh, and your knives. Your sporks. And uh, a <laughs> napkin. Get ready. Right, so you're right. going to be full. We're going to be eating at KFC later. Uh, mm -hmm. And joining us... <laughs> Once again, from the Lagging Balls podcast, uh, it's a community podcast all about World of Warcraft and other Blizzard games. It's this. Welcome back. Hi, I'm full. I'm just being <laughs> contrary. I'm sorry. That's all Take right. Take that, Gizmo. You were talking about <laughs> wanting a burrito before the show. Welcome to Bo. I know, it's, 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 so, so you know, that's that's uh, that's all good. Well, welcome. Uh, guys, it's so great to see you and this. Thanks for joining us once again. Uh, and mm -hmm. thank you guys in the Twitch chat. And no matter where you are, thank you for joining us uh, for this wonderful show. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. A lot of stuff. Like, a, a, like a lot. <laughs> well, <laughs> a lot. There's, there's so much content. And why am I stalling? I don't know. Um, but first, I want to, I, before we get into the uh, all the infos that we have for everybody, I just kind of want to check in with you guys and see what you're up to. Um, Fist, now, you said that you had just started doing the Black Temple time walking and then had to bail on your group. Before, before I did. So no, I'm very out. angry. So how is it? How is the Black Temple time walking overall? Um, it's, it's like that time walking phenomenon where you, you go in and you're not afraid of anything, you know? Yeah. You're like, oh, I, I'm not afraid of this. I've, I've done this. I'm more powerful than this. And then you go in and you're reminded, it's like, oh, it's scaling. So I should be afraid of this. <laughs> Um, but Black Temple is just, it's so cool and it's, it's, it's really neat to be back in there and to be afraid of things. And it's not actually as like easy as people were saying it's going to be. I think they said it was tuned to just like a little bit easier than a normal raid. Um, but you know, we had almost 20 people and it was giving us uh, a good fight. We wiped a few times. So, uh, but yeah, well, and it's you guys, really great to be you there. guys are actually pretty geared, right? Oh yeah, we're uh, we're in the middle of a uh, heroic TOS. Okay. So fairly geared, yeah. All right. But um, cool. yeah. Cool. And how goes yeah, the how goes the TOS run? By the way. Um, we're three of nine right now. We're nice. actually doing it wrong. You're not supposed to go in and skip Inquisition, and we're we're going like uh, straight to Mistress, and apparently she's the hardest of the first six bosses. So uh, we got her down to like two percent last week. So I think we've got her this week. Awesome. Hopefully. I think I just jinxed us, but whatever. Of course. Well, no. <laughs> well, then you get her down. You just go to the other ones because they're easier. Bang, exactly. Bang, bang, boom. As soon as you get yeah. her down, the rest of them just fall. Just yeah, automatically. Fall. I think. Just I think. Really? Throws loot at yep. you. Yeah. Is you that a even, bug? You don't even have to. Uh, you don't have, even have to fight them, or you know, the trash. <sighs> the trash disappears. The bosses di disappear. You get the loot. But I love not trying and getting loot anyway. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. That's why I'm ranged DPS. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm healer. Uh, so, yeah, I, I feel I feel you on that. Uh, anything else going on with you lately, as far as any um, of the other games or even in WoW PvP stuff? Because I know you're big into PvP. Oh yeah, the new brawl came out today. It is intense. Like not camping, but it's intense. 
that was a Kent joke. Sorry. Um, <laughs> But it's called mm-hmm. Deep Six, and it's, uh, I'm not sure which maps it is, but it focuses on, like, a few. And I got Silver Shard Mines twice, and it's just 6v6, and everything goes faster than normal, so the carts are dropping. And it was really interesting, because everybody was trying to figure out, like, should I, should we split up the team? Should we, like, send three onto a cart and make sure it gets there, and send three to attack the other team, and... It's just it's so fast paced and there's there's a lot of uh, responsibility on your end because there's so few people. It's right. it's it's intense. I'm going to say that again. Um, <laughs> right. And yeah, it's hard. But um, it seems like with most of these brawls and with uh, BGs in general, like it's usually just luck of the draw. Like if you get a really good team, then you're set. But if you don't, then you're not going to win. And when I won, it was a default because the alliance just sort of st- stopped coming out at one point and they just gave up and so we won and i mean it still felt good you know like, what, that's that i found that that's the anything. problem with the alliance and maybe i was maybe i was playing at the time because uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll just go you know what Ugh, fine horde can win this time that's that's totally cool it's it's totally fine yeah like i said i don't like i like doing nothing and getting loot so right. I mean, it works out right huh. Good. Good. <laughs> See now I, I also like the uh fifteen V fifteen arena mode mm-hmm. thing because there was no responsibility on that one. It was no. just it was just kinda like go out there and be the first to die and you can still be fine. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I <laughs> spent most of that fight just dotting up people and laughing. <laughs> I mean I do that a lot anyway, but sure. 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 <laughs> I understand. Uh, yeah. uh, hey Gizmo, how about you, bud? What have you been up to lately? Oh man, I have been up to a whole bunch of Heroes of the Storm. Surprise! Right? Who Whoa. would have thought? No. Uh, as well, yes, yes. Um, as well as a lot of Diablo, uh, which I've actually been playing a surprising amount of Diablo because there's no season going right now, which is typically when I play. Soon. Um, soon. Yes, very soon. <laughs> yeah. But I've been. Hopping in there to test out the Necromancer, kind of get a feel for him for whenever I hop into season because I'm going to go hardcore. So should be a quicker start than usual because I'll have a good feel for the character. Very cool. That's awesome. Very awesome. Hardcore Necromancer. Yeah. That's so that, metal. That Necromancer mm-hmm. is really cool. I, I, the more that I play that, the, the more I really like that class. So yeah, it's, it's super cool. And usually I'm not like, because it's kind of rangy. In a, in a lot of ways, you know, I mean, just as far as where you need to place all of your different things, but it feels very melee at the same time. And so it's kind of like this strange combo that they have with it. And I'm all I know is it's fun. And there's yeah, lots I've been, of blood. <laughs> I've been running two different builds. So there's like a blood pet build uh-huh. uh, that's more rangy. But the one I've been running most of the time is the bone build, bone shield or bone armor, <laughs> which is very melee. Uh, <laughs> oh boy and uh it's, <laughs> it's okay it's all right and uh <laughs> it's uh it's been it's been good it's been fun so it yeah. is a very good class and corpse explosion is like the the most fun ability ever Dude. and i'm kind of sad that bone armor doesn't use it oh, uh what? but it's super fun that is an amazing uh ability so yeah, yeah. yeah. just play I, just I, play it for that that's the only thing you need in life yeah. Yep. But that's explosions. what stood out to me. I got to play it at BlizzCon and I was just exploding corpses. It was Everywhere. a great time. Yeah. I skipped weird all for that. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I know that so over the last couple of weeks, uh, I was away in multiple places. Uh number one, I was in uh Salt Lake City, well, just outside of Salt Lake and Snowbird for Nerdtacular. And I want to say thank you to Scott Johnson and all of his team over there at uh Frog Pants Studios. They they do a fantastic job at this. It's a, it's basically it's a, I think Scott what what Scott called it was a family reu- reunion, but it's kind of like a family reunion slash conference. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like they have some cool panels and stuff like that, and you get to kind of meet up with all your friends again, and you get to get to kind of hang out with everybody and play board games or or whatever. And I think it was last show. Uh, where where I was talking, and I know I was at least talking about it in the pre-show. I was talking about when I was uh, chatting with Ghostcrawler, and this is yeah uh, before he before he left for for League of Legends. And wouldn't you know it? 
I was in Snowbird, and I, I look over at the little meetup thing, like the very first meetup thing, and there's Greg Street just standing right over there. And I was like, oh, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing here? <laughs> and he's like, I thought I'd check it out, you know, one last time. But they, they actually um, brought Greg onto a video games panel. Um, and I believe it's playing on the instance uh, feed right now. So if you go over to the instance feed, uh, uh, podcast and go check out their, their gaming panel, it has Scott Johnson, his sister, Greg Street. I mean, just kind of like all these folks in there. And they're talking about kind of the effect of video games and kind of like this larger, this bigger picture thing. And it's really cool. So mm -hmm. if you're into that type of stuff, uh, go go check that out. And I think everybody pretty much is. So Yeah, definitely. He, he's a really interesting guy to follow because even for League of Legends stuff now, he writes a whole bunch of articles. Um, he's always been good at addressing, you know, and, and how to deal with the trolls. Mm -hmm. um, but able to talk about changes that are coming to a game that people may not agree with, but give enough information out there, I guess, to make people understand and, and let them know why they're making the changes where I feel like a lot of people in that, I may have not said that well, but a lot of people and developers, I think are scared to communicate too much um, sure. to where he just has this really excellent grasp on it. Well, yeah, that and makes sense. Uh, everything he writes. I, so. I, I think what it is, is that a lot of, a lot of developers have a have a problem with um or not a problem but they they have this fear of saying too much promising too much about it <laughs> yeah. yes and i think what what greg street does is he actually talks about it on a very uh basic level and says well we're trying to do this because we really think it's going to be blah 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 you know whatever the whatever the mm -hmm. thing is he has a he has a great way of talking about it explaining it being fairly brief uh, which is always nice, but yet have enough information so that people can walk away with it and go, okay, I th yeah. think, I think yeah. he's on the right path anyway. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so I don't know, but it was, it was great to see him again and, and have more awkward moments. Just kind of like, Hey, <laughs> Hey Greg, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> right. I was like, what, what are you doing here? And I was like, how's it going? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So, uh, it was, it was good to see him again and it was good to hear him on that on that uh, video game panel. So uh, there's that. A uh, couple of other little updates before we get into the show part of the show. Uh, Saturday, August 5th. If you are in the Minneapolis area, I want you to come out for the Minnesota meetup. We are going to have that from 2 to 7 p.m. at uh, New Bohemian in Roseville, Minnesota, which is just outside of the cities. Uh, and we have a whole thing over on Facebook of I will be tweeting this out, and I think the show will be tweeting this out. All the all the stuff about the Minnesota meetup. So just follow us on Twitter, and and uh, I think you'll be able to find us. So, but it's what Saturday. Kind of food you're having there? Oh, uh, the, well, they have a bunch of. Food. It's kind of German, so uh, so oh. they have like wieners, schnitzel. <laughs> No, I don't know if they have schnitzel. But what are you doing? <laughs> do they have dancing wieners? With they they do faces. have all sorts of sausages and sausage type and pretzels God, and stop. that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a clean show. It's not necessarily uh, not an adult show sometimes. Uh -huh. That's okay. Yeah, I'll uh, be there. We have adult cartoons, adult no, coloring books. No, nope, no, nope. it's not adult <laughs> themed. <laughs> it's I'm adult going. style coloring books. Uh, and that's the other thing that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the CTR party Kickstarter. It has been fully funded, number one, but not Ooh. just that. We actually made it to our second stretch goal, and we made it past that to over $16,000. So thank you, guys. Oh, wait. Wow. That needs to be up higher. There we go. There we go. Uh Thank you, everybody who supported it. We plan on making this. Uh, this is a, like a a record for us. We had like 140 people uh, donate uh, 16, over $16,000. Everybody who donated will get, uh, everybody who kicked in will get a pin, collector's pin. Uh, it'll be cool. And plus a bunch of other stuff. And there's going to be more stuff at the party. That means we can do more stuff. We can do more stuff with the live stream. We can do uh, kind of a bunch of stuff. So I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, now it's time to figure out uh, exactly what we can get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's time to make it all happen. 
So, <laughs> but thank you to everybody that uh, participated in that. It was really uh, great to see all the everybody coming out and and supporting the the party. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, I like it. I don't know. Me all too. right. So, with that, we will go on to the news. It's time for the news. Uh, so battle.net. The little, the little, uh, the, our little launch thing and, and everything like that. And it contains all the little games. Um, Gizmo. Yes. Are, are we going to, are we going to see some changes happening with, uh, um, with things? Is there something only, that might be happening? Only potentially. Okay. A change that we have been waiting and asking for. Yeah. For a very, very long time. And that is the ability to appear offline in the Blizzard application. And so, this... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, this, this has been um, kind of data mined by a few different people here. So the first thing was on a Hearthstone update. People noticed it to changes in the game code uh -huh. um, that you know it says global friends list challenge button, I'm appearing offline. And then Jeff Kaplan came out onto the forums and talked about how uh, they would like to add that option into Overwatch, and they're in the process of coordinating that with Battle.net and all the other games, uh, how it's not an easy thing to do necessarily in Overwatch, but you know they have not been moving at a rate which is acceptable for this because they know people have been wanting it for a really long time. So he thanks people for being patient. And um, yeah, and then it's, uh, so yeah, so we're, we're hopefully going to get that. But back in, it looks like, what, 2012? Yeah, this is when it was originally yeah. announced. Right. So you I mean, know, it's, it's just been it's stupid. I mean, they 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 announced this. <laughs> it's like the dance studio, right? It's kind of hey, like we the finally dance got that. Well, we didn't get we the dance get studio necessarily, but we did get the AH dance party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's been soon TM, and you know right. what? Soon TM is maybe that TM is disappearing here. <laughs> maybe. I think the TM sort of counts for like from now till ever. Yeah. Sure. Ever. Sure. Right. Or never. Next week to never. Next. Yep. So <laughs> my new request here, yeah. once we get this, is expanding or getting rid of the friends list limit. That's Ooh, yeah. That'd be nice. That would be nice. I didn't know so, there was a limit. Oh. There is, unfortunately. Yeah. It's what is it? Uh, is it 200 now? I think it's 250. 250. What? You guys know that many people? Oh. We have a, we have a very large guild. Oh yeah, I yeah, forgot. Yeah, and and it's and it's tough. You know, you want to make sure that uh, you friend as many people as possible so that you're always always will uh, always able to plug into whatever you need to. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's and so. then you know you, you know, try and clean it up and you go, oh, this person hasn't been on in eight months. It's probably safe to delete them. The next day, dude, why yeah, why did you delete me? Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. We're all for eight months. Well, I just yeah. started back up again. Mm -hmm. Of course. I'm worried that if this actually happens, all of my friends are going to disappear forever. Like they're just going to appear Which, offline. Oh, the, the offline stuff? Yeah, they'll just be gone. Do you think everybody that, will be gone? Well, I mean, all of these games, well, most of these games anyway, are built as group games, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And I but understand like this. I understand Sorry, that is... I, I understand that there's a thing where you you know sometimes you just you, you're busy you don't really want to be bothered by somebody because you just want to get in get out and and be on your way, uh, but I don't I don't know if it's going to be a problem is it? I don't think so. I think this this only counts for Battle.net in particular and not WoW or any game that you're playing. Like I'm confused on that. Like is it are you going to be appearing offline from Battle.net or? Are you going to log in and be invisible? Because I don't think that's the way at least WoW is supposed to be. I would think it would be basically um, you can appear offline as WoW too. I would I would think. I think everything carries over, doesn't it, right now? I don't know. Well, and I mean, that's that's what Jeff was kind of talking about. They're coordinating with Battle.net and the other games. Um, I think they're... It it may be individually, but it sounds like they're working together to try and get this going on all games at once. Right. Right. So interesting. Yeah. I mean, well, I can see. I can definitely see how this is going to be great. Like you know, raiding guild leaders who give people their bnet tags or just add a bunch of people because they have to. Like they're not always going to want to log in and be able to give people like their time and energy. Like nobody wants to log in and be bombarded with like a hundred questions. But uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. I, I, I don't know if it'll be too big of a deal, but uh, I know that there have been people where, where they're just like, oh, man, I just want to, like, be away from people for a while. I'm just leveling. Yeah, just, I'm just leveling a new tune because I just want to just, uh oh, just want to get <laughs> away from everybody. In this way, when I should be playing Heroes because a big patch came out and we have a show tomorrow, I can get on and play right. Overwatch instead. <laughs> and Ryan can't see that I'm playing Overwatch <laughs> and yell at me when I should be playing Heroes. <laughs> there you go. But Overwatch is so fun. I mean, not, nothing it's against fun. Hots at all. Nothing against that. But Overwatch is so fun and fast, and they have arcade mode, and that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. All right. And it's what? it's got Diva and 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 Genji and Lucio in it. I mean, tch, stupid hots. Uh, right. Yeah. That's a, that's a joke. That was like right. a cross game joke. <laughs> it was. I mean, so it was good. Although I know they're in both games. Although they all are pretty cool. I don't know about Genji, but the rest <laughs> of them are good. I need healing. Right. This is a Hanzo main. Oh. <laughs> That's not true. That's Why would you perfect. say something like Take that? Take it back. Why would you say something? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should get into the show and talk about World of Warcraft. Let the suffering commence. Oh, no. I don't know about that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Mythic uh, Tomb of Sargeras progression. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. And Thist, how are things looking with uh, with the race? Um, methods first, duh. Mm -hmm. Exorcist second, Alpha third. Um, all the guilds are still making attempts on Kill Jaden right now, and sure. I'm not surprised because he's really hard. I actually tried him on Heroic today for the first time. I plugged in, yeah, and it's not easy. I mean, nobody <laughs> said it was, and right. I wasn't expecting it to be, but yeah, it's not easy. Um, so the, the interesting thing is limit. Um, stepped out of the race, citing missing players. Um, and those missing players were actually banned right. for real money runs. And apparently, um, the people who got banned then went and bought uh, 110 accounts and then decided to stream with those accounts like they wouldn't get caught or something <laughs> like that. So I don't... <laughs> oh, and we, we kind of talked about this uh, last show. We, I talked generically about it um, as not to... Uh, spread too bad a news for some some folks but yeah you you cheat and you go against tos and and sometimes you just lose big and mm -hmm. and then they get 110 accounts and then they lose that yeah you know what i don't understand is like you literally <laughs> have the coolest job in the entire world you get to play video games for a living right and get treated like a rock star for playing well like why would you do anything on earth to squander that or potentially like ruin that? I don't get it. Yep. And yeah. Uh, go ahead. I know it's come up before on, because this has happened before. This isn't a new thing. And no. it's brought up the lot. conversation of, okay, well, does this mean that, you know, these people that are putting all this time into the world race, because most of them, a lot of them work full-time jobs. So it's like a big deal that they're having to take this off. Um, are they able to make enough doing that? Um, granted, that's not you know that's not up to Blizzard because they they don't sponsor this thing at all. There's no prize or anything like that. Um, but that's kind of where the should the community organize something for like a prize pool or something like that because a lot of you know Heroes has community sponsored events. Um, so it's it's unfortunate that maybe some people feel they have to do this in order to make up for the two weeks, three weeks that they're taking off of work. Uh, right. But at the same time, if it's something that you're doing, you kind of know what the expectations are and yeah. if you are able or not able to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just don't mm -hmm. get it. Yep. Well, and it's, it's always, <laughs> it is kind of always one of those things. And I know that there's, there's always been like this undercurrent. There's always been like a beef with, um, these, these top ranked players breaking TOS and getting a slap on the wrist or getting nothing, uh, at all, because we know that, that in order to play for some of these teams, you have to have five or six tunes all maxed out at their maximum level. And, and that can't always happen very easily. And, and there have been 
We've seen things like uh, account sharing and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like all these different little TOS violations that some of these top teams have been accused of or banned for or or suspended for or whatever. And I know that there's always this undercurrent of stuff that kind of goes along with playing at the top level. Mm -hmm. And this is one more. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's unfortunate. Yep. Uh, but in the raid, in the in the race, sorry, uh, for World First, uh, only two are eight of nine, and those are Method and Exorcist. So, in the, Alpha, uh, as far as it goes, I'm I'm ref- let me refresh. No, they are, does, not, um, they are not listed it, anyway. On are Raider. you on Wow Progress? I'm on Raider.io, which is a oh, new okay. thing. So. Um, I'm on that one, and it says that those two are the only ones that have uh, cleared eight of nine, and that was as of five days ago. And there are like 38 guilds that are seven of nine. And so, yeah, I don't know. And I, I'm mixed up just because we haven't had a few show, or a show for sure. two weeks. Is this the second week of Mythic or the third? This second, second, isn't it? Second, yeah. Second, yeah. Yeah. So this feels, and again, maybe it's just because of our time off, but this feels like it's lasting a little longer than the previous. Well, I think mythics. what it was is that um, what's the what's the second to last boss? Um, that one is oh. a, a little tough on mythic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Avatar. <laughs> because Sko, Very tough. Sko said it was something like four hundred and fifty pulls for that. Yeah, one. They're, I can in see that. chat they're saying Alpha did eight hundred and fifty pulls. Yeah. Oh man. That's right. That's crazy. Avatar is an incredible fight, but it is so people don't people say it's not mechanic heavy, but it is, and it's also a DPS race. Like you have to have the deeps. Right. And but well, there's just so much room for error. Right. And one of the cool things about the race this year is that we're seeing a lot more teams live stream it too, cuz yeah. I know like Sloot and and Future are live streaming it. I don't know about um, the rest of them, I know that um, uh, I know that we've seen a, a bunch of different teams kind of kind of do that. But um, yeah, it's been it's been nice to see people actually go through the, str- the struggle <laughs> through the 450, 850 pulls on <laughs> one boss and see what that does to you. I know what it did to me when we were on. Uh, what was it? Was it Siege Master? <laughs> oh gosh back in the day Master. and it was like 300 was- 300 pulls and i was like oh god you gotta be kidding me <laughs> yeah i've had a i've had a boss i will never forget the the dogs and mogushan volts that oh, was like yeah. shortly before i came over to convert to raid mm-hmm. uh we were at 300 plus pulls on that on the first one was- Wow! Really? Pat, don't you don't oh, you wow. dare! Those dogs were vicious. All right. I mean, and this wasn't they a super that vicious. serious raid I'm team. Sorry. They're little pu- um, they're puppies. They just want to be spent, held. They just we want... spent weeks on those. <laughs> just Did you try love. getting good? Oh oh! You know, try doing that. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. You know, snap. That, this is why I call you a Hanzo main. This uh, <laughs> come on, that hurts me inside. <laughs> Ow! Right. But hey, those things that, that you know, this was. I hadn't been raiding a long time. The team wasn't super serious. Oh, the team excuses, broke up right, shortly right. after. Hey, and then I came over to convert, it wasn't, convert to... Raid. It wasn't a serious thing, and then he went on a break. It was fine. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a serious thing. We just had 300 polls on it. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> it's not serious at all. <laughs> I, I will say, like, the first week or so of that, they were really tough. I mean, the first couple of weeks, it was pretty tough. Yeah. I'm not going to deny that it wasn't... That it didn't have its problems. But 300 pulls, I don't know about that. Yeah, that's a problem. That. That's That sounds like a personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, guys, uh, second LFR wing is available for those guys that uh, that want to do that stuff. I actually did that today. That was kind of fun. It was, it was all was right. It? it was okay. It was LFR. It was very was LFR. Was it a good group? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It was it was not bad because uh, the way that I figure it is that Tuesdays are really the day to do LFR if you if you want to do LFR. Yeah, it's very unlike a Sunday or a Monday group, <laughs> which might not necessarily have the same the same experience level as everybody else. That that. <laughs> oh, that was really politically. Tuesday. Yeah, that's nice. No, no, no. But that's true. That's true. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Um, I I do think that. You know the the more 
the more hardcore players that are doing LFR are going on Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. You know, definitely. Because grab they just, some, uh, they just want to get their loot and get out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Before, before their me. raid time, before their raid time mm-hmm. and, and do stuff. So it was, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's, it's LFR. So, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, there are still things to do and, and there, I always kind of enjoy the first week or so of each wing that comes out because there's total confusion. That's enjoyable. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not always enjoyable, but it's always kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Hurting cats. Cause, about it, yeah. Cause nobody knows what the fight is and they're like, ah, I'm just gonna like half the people are like, what am I doing? The other half are like, ugh, noob. And- yeah, and, and it's it's a it's a rough couple of fights. Like, how how did they translate to you, Elifar? I haven't done it yet. Um, pretty good. So it was just a matter of the ones that know stuff mm-hmm. have to have to say stuff, especially like the right. tanks. I think a lot of people look to the tanks and they say, okay, tanks, what do you think needs to happen for all this stuff? Okay, you guys get in the <laughs> spirit world. You guys stay corporeal. Uh, <laughs> blah blah blah. You know. <laughs> whatever yeah. it is we just call it top and bottom yeah i'm always on the bottom right <clears throat> leave that yeah, alone good okay <laughs> yep <laughs> um uh and in other news uh i i saw that uh this your 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 um i don't know exactly how to your heartthrob your oh yeah your mm-hmm. guy dream guy yeah um yeah. ultimate fantasy come true yeah right yeah Ian he's Hosa a uh, he was on with Jesse Cox and um, and uh, talking to him about uh, all all things WoW, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. you watched the whole thing and like several times at least. <laughs> was <laughs> what did you, what was uh, what anything stand out for you on that interview? Really? Um, not really. Um, like he can't say anything new mm-hmm. about seven point three really right now. Um, it was, it was cool cause it was, it, it was a really relaxed interview and I like, it I was. like seeing those. Um, it was kind of funny. Uh, the energy was really great. Um, he just basically talked about, uh, you know, Argus, um, why it's, uh, not going to be a separate expansion. Um, you know, he touched on like how well the dungeons are doing this expansion and, uh, you know, just sort of like recapping Legion and, uh, you know, touching on a bit of lore as well. Right. Um, yep. But yeah, it was, it was all just, you know, nothing groundbreaking. Well, but, and, uh, and it's funny because, I mean, it was, it was Jesse Cox and Crandor, I should say. Mm-hmm. And so it's bound to be just like this goofball type mm-hmm. of thing where they talk about WoW, sure, and they talk about all these different things. But, but you know, it's still a half yeah. hour of Ian's, info Ian's and just, silliness. Like, really funny and yep. witty and handsome. And he looked really great in that gray shirt. And... <laughs> You know, when he's not in like a, a super serious Q and A for him, it's just like his real personality comes out, and I just love to see that. You know, he is he has got a dry wit about him. Very much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I always I always enjoy talking to him because he's always he always is kind of like that, and I'm yeah. I me appreciate too. it. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Yeah, he's so, just a gamer. Yeah, he's just a, just like us. He's just a nerd like us. Mm-hmm. It's all good. Except he's also a lawyer. That, he has that's also lawyer. true. He's a, he's a lawyer oh, nerd. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, <laughs> it's like he he's really smart, but also he's really smart. It's like it's like a double sort of yeah. He's double smart. You yeah. Know, and very verbose. Yes. That guy's no, that guy knows how to talk. Mm-hmm. And he's so. got those eyes, and they're blue, and they're beautiful. I'm not gonna disagree. Not gonna do <laughs> you it. You can't. You nope, can't. I can't. I really can't. <laughs> um, so yeah, there there is an interesting. A thing I think that happened on here. So when he was talking about Argus and the fact that it was why it made sense for this to not be an expansion, uh, he went to talk about how it's just kind of a husk world because it's been destroyed by the Legion for millennia. Okay. But then in the very next point, he went to talk about these invasion points, which are sound pretty cool. They're going to be like a portal network on Argus where you can uh, the Legion's assaulting other worlds, and you can go into those. Right. Sounds like do some invasion type stuff. Yep. But he talks about how you're going to be getting a glimpse of all the new planets around the cosmos. And that, to me, almost completely counters the first point 
because it's not just Argus. We're going to be seeing glimpses of all these new worlds. So right. I think that could have been possibly a cool expansion because it wouldn't have all had to take place in Argus. Right. But the question then becomes, uh, what's like? I I'm kind of mind blown on what we may see on these new planets, and if there will be hints on some of these worlds as to what possibly the new expansion may be. Here's here's what I'm guessing. With all these new planets that we're going to be seeing in 7.3, I'm guessing the next expansion for WoW right now. And that's going to be World of Warcraft, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. No, it's going to be <laughs> and Worlds the new play of, of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, Worlds Ooh, of Warcraft. I like that. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and we'll have a playable uh, raccoon. Raccoon. I mean, It'll be, that's John. It's yep. going to be a raccoon. Yep. Uh, Shadow Priest. You say it like that, raccoon. Raccoon. Okay. Yeah. Our yeah. okay. Yep. Raccoon. Mm -hmm. I get it. No, you're, you're both or wrong. Or a raccoon. It's fine. It's 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 yeah. totally cool. <laughs> yeah, we're going to space next. That's the next expansion, and we're all going to be Naga. So it's going to be World of Starcraft. Sure. And we're all going to be Naga. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Cool. Just uh, you get a pair of you know legs from the boss. You just split them right in half, and yeah. you can share with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You only need one leg hole. Mm -hmm. Just one. Mm -hmm. That's right. No boots. You can uh, wear the boot on your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I> so, <laughs> as long as we're there, let's talk about 7.3. Because uh, there was a bunch of new uh, stuff kind of data mined for, from 7.3. We kind of know some more things about 7.3. Uh, we know more about the raid uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh Giz Gizmo, other than the boot on the head for all of the Naga, um, mm -hmm. what uh, what are some of the things that we know about 7.3? <laughs> Sorry. Well, Pat, no. <laughs> um, so no. <laughs> um, we do know that uh, the raid and Taurus, the Burning Throne, is going to be located on this Stygian, Stygian wake. Yep. Uh, it's going to have 11 bosses. <laughs> So going uh, back up to a, a fairly big raid with the chance, maybe not chance, with potentially a secret boss. It's not like you the finish it and you're like, mm, you, you get the new boss. You don't. Right. So um, it's, it's oh, totally you know, randomized. It's on a like yeah. just roll pushing for it. through 11 bosses. And then it's just like, mm, yeah, do this one, too. Mm -hmm. Or not. There you go. Oh, man. It's but, like, uh, did you ever guys, do you guys ever play Diddy Kong Racing on N64? Uh, yeah. And like you beat the whole thing, and then at the end, it's like you did it. Now do everything backwards. Do you remember that? Oof. I don't. That's when I threw it across the room. <laughs> <laughs> that's when. That's when everything broke. Yeah, triggered. Yep. Worried about that. Yep. Uh, but some of the other cool stuff we know about this. So on uh, icy veins, mm -hmm. there are a lot of pictures of some new models that are going to be right. uh, in Argus and the boss models as well. And these are pretty darn neat. There is a lot of detail in these. So this is, I, I believe, you know, we just had our biggest patch ever not too long ago. Well, and and, and, and it's now, just supposed to be bigger than that. Right. And now they're saying that this patch is going to be bigger than that patch. Uh, yeah. Which patch is biggest? Uh, 7.3 apparently. Is, yes. Is the largest patch ever known to man ever so whoa so this there that's a big patch right? big patch very big <laughs> there's two ever, uh, there's two evers in there guys <laughs> two that's gotta be big <laughs> right but yeah you'll, but, I mean, you'll you'll see some stuff that you recognize obviously some character models but yeah. um they're they they look pretty pretty darn good but more importantly coming in 7.3 guys we have more changes to artifact knowledge right who would have thought more changes to artifact knowledge. So um, it's going to be increased back to level 50. Which yeah, it was, but you're which no it longer. was for a little bit. And then they went, oh, mm. no, we're, gonna, we're not going to do that. We're yeah. going to go to 40, and that'll yeah. be fine. But now they're that going back to 50. Yes. Fine too. So it's going back to 50. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're no longer going to need be or to head back to your order hall, order hall for the research. Okay. Uh, instead, each week, you will automatically gain one artifact knowledge. Uh, and it says all characters are going to start with artifact knowledge level 41 when 7.3 goes live. That's the part that I really like. So that is a sweet catch-up mechanic. 
That Thank is you, Liz. an amazing catch-up mechanic that you don't have to pay for, which is great. Yes. Yeah, and you don't have to do anything, which goes back to the thing about getting stuff for not doing anything. Right, mm-hmm. getting stuff for free. So thanks, Blizz, for that. Thanks, Blizz. Yep. Um, what do you guys think about the weekly level for artifact knowledge? I mean, at this point, I, I guess at this point, it's not really that big of a deal. But if they would have done that no. from the beginning, oof. That, no, that would have been weird. That yeah, that- Horrible. Well, that just there would have been no reward for the players that yeah. are putting in the work. Whereas yeah. this, this is end of expansion. You know, everyone who wants to come back that maybe left after the first raid can right. get back in, yeah. be on I'm the same level. Because uh, at this point, it's just going to be, you know, skill to to get you through the expansion and not time put in. That's um, true. Oh, it's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it it's nice. I enjoy it. Yeah, I'm not mad at it. I if they had introduced this sooner, I would be angry just because mm-hmm. of all the work I did put in. But right. no, it's fine. It's fine. It's, I don't care anymore. It's fine. I'm, I'm glad because up up until I read this, mm-hmm. Ian in the interview was talking about how oh Legion is the you know there's the most to do in Legion and it's super <laughs> easy to catch up as far as mechanics and do alts. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then this comes out and it's like, oh, okay. And it What's hasn't that? it hasn't been up until uh the seeing this really. I mean, it's been yeah. okay. Don't get me wrong. It's been it's been okay. Like, you know, especially with seven two five, you had the heirloom update, and so mm-hmm. like if you had something yeah. sitting at a hundred, then it becomes easier because you can upgrade the gear, upgrade the gear, and then uh, and then go out into the world and and start anyway. But I haven't done that where I've, where I've gone from one hundred to one ten yet, um, and now this knowing that I start off at AK 40 or whatever, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> that's going to be yeah. really great. So, yeah, I think, I think I agree with Ian though, because what? there are a lot of alts in my guild and people who join the guild from the Alliance side. I'm not going to brag, but whatever. Um, <laughs> but there's just that there's so many things to do that are insanely rewarding, just like mythic plus dungeons and the weekly bonuses. Like you can get mad updates with that. Yeah. And it's just like those two things in particular, along with world quests and like legendaries dropping and stuff and world bosses and emissary caches. Like there's there's literally just so much to do now. And it's hard to think back to before Legion when we didn't have all these avenues uh, to to just like boost our mains and especially our alts. So, I mean, but yeah, you, this makes it super easy now. But sure. Do you think that there's almost uh, too many avenues, though? Because I know that that's kind of one of the. It's always kind of like trying to find the the balance between too many things to do and not enough. Um, right. So where do you where do you stand on that? Do do you would you rather just throw everything at people and possibly confuse those folks that are coming up that don't really know what's going on, or or do you want to kind of focus it more on one or well maybe a handful of avenues that are probably the strongest? Right. Um. No, I think everything it's I think there's uh there's two points. Some some people they really really like doing things by themselves and the idea of hugging into things or asking for help is is really not something that they want to do even though they are playing an MMORPG. Sure. But uh so, you know, just like hugging into mythics and stuff can be daunting for people and so I think, you know, the the world quests and the weeklies and the emissaries that that's in the world bosses. That's really easy for somebody to do if they're put off by doing stuff with other people. And if you don't have a problem with that, then literally the sky's the limit. Like you can go nuts. I know people who are going ham constantly because there's so many things to go ham on. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time there's a patch, I feel like I don't feel like it's too much. And I've definitely had patches in the past that have made me feel a little overwhelmed and it's it's a little hard to catch up. But I think just just the way that like each avenue differs just a little bit depending on your situation like if you have a strong guild or if you're just by yourself um i think that you have ample choices to level up anything that you want so that's yeah, my stance sure. on it and it's yeah it's, it's going to be kind of split for it it's me personally it's great for me to you know when i'm leveling up alts and stuff to be able to do something else than mm-hmm. what i did with the first one but then you're going to have the people who don't have a lot of alts, but are also completionists. So they want to do everything, <laughs> sure, sure. but there, you know, there's so many things that you don't have to do in this expansion. 
Uh, and it def it definitely got easier for alts as far as catch mechanics throughout. I think my main thing that sticks into my head because I I dropped from convert to mythic pretty early on this expansion, and for me, it was just the the bad taste in my mouth is the Surmar stuff. Oh yeah, because right. I felt when I wasn't enjoying mage, I I was stuck on it because I was like there is no way that I'm going to be able to level up my alts and get caught up on all these, uh, the Surmar quest line and be able to contribute. So, right. Well, that, that's yeah. kind of what sticks in my head. Yeah. And I think that there were a lot of, I mean, one of the critical points about Legion, I think overall is, is the grinding. I mean, there's so many different th things that you need to grind. If you're trying to be a competitive raider or a competitive player of any kind because you want to get all that power, all the all the all the artifact power you can handle, right? Um, mm. And I know some people that uh, like Navar in our guild who plays constantly, and he only plays one character, and he and he gets, you know, forty million plus AP in a day or whatever nice. it is. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. He's he's making all sorts of insane AP. Um, he probably doesn't even need it anymore. Um, yeah. but, but, uh, but, you know, he's, he's just always playing and it's like, that's, that's cool for, for that guy. That's you've, we've got everything. And if he gets really bored, he can always go into pet battle dungeons, which I still don't understand <laughs> at all. I mean, I mean, I'm all up for a pet battle every once in a while, but I only have three pets. So it better be the right <laughs> matchup. <laughs> don't go in. <laughs> right. Well, I only have three that are level 25. Uh, so, so I've got those three. Better hope they live. Uh, yeah, and they don't. They never don't go do. in the cave, Pat. No, don't go in. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I am not. But so yeah, I mean, like for me, and uh, I find it a little much, especially pet battle dungeons. I think that was a little, that was an overstep on WoW's part. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of people is, would argue with that, though. I know a lot of people would, which is kind of funny because I mean that's the diversity and the awesomeness of of WoW, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what keeps it fresh for all right. these years. So, and while I may not necessarily get it, I know that there are several people uh, that several, several, <laughs> several people, many several people that get it. Several handfuls. Yeah. But uh, next up that's are cool. pet dungeon <laughs> mythic pluses. Oh, no. gonna, gonna have affixes and everything. Yes. Wow. By the way, we also have more info on uh, Mythic Plus stuff later in the show in the <gasps> esports section. So uh, listen up. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but I do think we pr should probably move on to uh, a different game, unless you have anything else for WoW. Anybody else have anything? Anything? I mean, I could keep talking about it if you want me to, I, but I know you could. But I think that's all the new, I think that's all the news for right now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll we'll catch up more <laughs> next time, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's go to Overwatch. Now we're cooking with gas. That's right, because we actually have a new hero called Doomfist. Yeah! Finally, uh, Doomfist, and I'll play the uh, the video for the uh, for the people in the chat room. Uh, so we have a new, uh, cinematic for Doomfist. It's, we, we know more about Doomfist. Uh, Gizmo, what do we know about Doomfist? So first off, this cinematic is absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. and it's cool. I want it and I know a ton of other people want it. We need an Overwatch anime now because if yeah. you enjoy animes, like you are going to love this thing. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty yeah. rad. Uh, um, Go ahead. But yeah, so Doomfist himself, we did uh, learn a little bit more about him. Uh, so he is uh, based from Nigeria. He's a commanding offensive hero. So I know some people thought he may potentially be another uh, tank. Mm -hmm. But no, he's going to be offensive. And his abilities are pretty freaking cool. So he's on the PTR right now. Yep. And he is going to have a, a hand cannon, which is four shots that fire from each of his knuckles, or you can shoot them all at once, sounds like. Uh, he's going to have a seismic slam, or a rocket punch, excuse me, which yeah. uh, I haven't played him yet in PTR, but it sounds kind of like it's going to be like Reinhardt's charge, uh, but instead of pinning somebody with you, you just knock him back. It does extra damage if you knock him into a wall. 
It's amazing. It, <laughs> have you played it? Uh, this? Yeah, I tried him. Uh, so yeah, I have. So what did you think of Doomfist overall? Um, I I don't I I haven't played Overwatch and laughed my head off just by like the abilities since beta. He is ridiculously fun. Oh yeah. My favorite move is what is it like? Uh, rising uppercut. He literally just like punches somebody into the air and then they go flying. And you can shoot them while they're in the air. It's hilarious. Is it like Ken <laughs> from Street Fighter? I mean, is it exactly like that? Can, exactly that, like that. That whole thing. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. He's fantastic, and uh, like just he see he seems so mobile. Like a lot of his moves, like propel him, like either mm -hmm. forward or up, and his uh, his Q meteor strike. He mm -hmm. leaps into the sky. And then you've got this like AOE circle on the ground and you can pick where you want to just like unleash doom upon somebody. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I haven't played him enough to figure out like where you can't go with it, but it seems like you can just travel pretty much anywhere as long as you're in the air and then try to come down on as many people as possible. And it's super OP right now. I don't know what they're doing, but uh, you have yeah. to do it in time or it just does it. So it's kind of like a uh, junk rats rip tire. Like if you don't figure out where you're going to put that tire, it's just going to explode. So. Right. Like uh, that. right. I saw, I've seen several videos of people comboing that with uh, Zarya's yes. Graviton Surge and it's mm -hmm. just a massacre. Yeah. Um, but and that, yeah. And, that, it, and that, so Jeff Kaplan uh, and everybody knows that uh, everybody loves Jeff Kaplan. Number one. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> but Jeff Kaplan came out with another video as well, and he said that that was kind of the thing with with uh, Doomfist is that it's going to be all about the combos and about how he works with other uh, characters on your team and and their abilities and kind of comboing his own abilities as well and making that more fun and more enjoyable for every everybody. So um, mm -hmm. that's that's kind of neat. But I'm I'm still kind of upset, guys. Why? Cause he's what's wrong? Cause he's not Terry Crews. I wanted Terry Crews <laughs> yeah. to be the voice, and it's not Terry Crews. I wanted him to to, to be Doomfist for some reason. I don't it's, even know why. Maybe he's gonna be another character down the road. Who knows? But well, I but think. Damn it! I wanted him to be Doomfist for some reason. <laughs> it will well, always it, be your Doomfist. Yeah, yeah. and you know. <laughs> Blizzard I don't even know what and... that means. Go ahead. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. <laughs> um, Blizzard and especially Overwatch and stuff has been so good at being culturally diverse um, and everything. Mm -hmm. And especially, you know, with Doomfist having a character from Nigeria, I don't remember the voice actor's name, um, but he really does sound fantastic. And yeah. Blizzard has just gotten so good at trolling us. I've experienced it plenty of times in Heroes of the Storm now with Probius and then the Genji <laughs> trailer that everyone thought was going to be Deathwing. So, yeah, we wanted Terry Crews for the longest time. And then I don't remember how long ago it was. He tweeted a picture of himself visiting in front of the Overwatch this thing. This was a few months ago. So, I mean, yes. he's obviously going to be Doomfist. Well, well. Obviously. No. Nope. But <laughs> then was it E3? <laughs> They showed a game that I believe was Activision mm -hmm. where he was like in the, the trailer for that. I don't remember the name of the game. So obviously, I don't know. I guess he was just in town at Activision and they oh, were like, Jeff was like, hey, no. Terry, people <laughs> want you for Doom Fist really bad. Let's troll these people. Wait, Let's no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Guys, 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 guys. What, what, guys. what? So do you think that Terry Crews was like voicing stuff for this Titan 2.0 project that's going on <laughs> over at Blizzard right now. Because they have the Titan yes. 2.0 project, uh, Titaner Boots uh, 2.0, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> this very <laughs> secret project where they steal all these WoW people from like a Holinka and oh. uh, all these other folks. They're going over to the Titan 2.0 project. Terry Crews and is a voice in the, t in the Titan project. I mean, ooh, look at that. That makes sense. That would be cool. Or maybe Terry Crews is going to voice the uh, upcoming Jeff Kaplan character in Overwatch. Yes. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wrestler. <laughs> um, his alt is death. Um, like he just died. And by the way, you know the the dude that makes all the Overwatch videos from the Overwatch from the 
Jeff Kaplan videos. Dino Flask. Oh, Dino Flask. And that was the most recent video that he made was uh, Jeff Kaplan introducing the Jeff Kaplan character in Overwatch. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to be a Jeff Kaplan main. <laughs> yeah. I, what is the what is the cry out though? It's not I need healing. What would it be? Uh, wrestle with Jeff. Prepare for death. No. Take you out with a long range beam. Mess with. Hi, the, I'm Jeff with from the Overwatch Mess with team. the best. <laughs> die like the rest. Which was, that was. Never mind. That was from hackers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anything else for Doomfist that you guys want to talk about? It's tons of fun. Um. And... Just try him. Try him. Oh. Even in AI, he's so much fun. It's and you can. Uh, there's an arcade mode where you can go six v six Doomfist, and it's really hard. I am. I am not a huge melee ga guy, but um, because you know, like Genji, I don't really get him necessarily. I'm more of a junk rat. Or a diva. Uh, yeah. Or a diva. Or a You are a diva. Yep. That too. <laughs> I was giving you crap, but I'm totally a Hanzo main. I go. Oh wow. That's me. Yep. So you're just projecting um, onto me, Giz. That's great. Hanzo Thanks. Hanzo and Roadhog, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we do need to get on to some other news, including uh from Hearthstone. Well met. There it is. Uh so <laughs> We actually had a new thing from uh, Hearthstone, which I'm really actually kind of excited about. They actually announced their second second expansion for the Year of the Mammoth, and it's very fitting to be in the Year of the Mammoth. Yep, Why? because it's cold. Because Holy. it's cold. Yep. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you should know that you're Canadian. Um, because <laughs> we're talking about they just announced it. It's Knights of the Frozen Throne. Yeah! Yeah. And uh, I will play the video for the video people. Um, but, uh, I mean, this is going to bring the Lich King and Death Knights from WoW to Hearthstone. And I'm yes. so I'm so jazzed about this, guys, because mm -hmm. I thought ICC was like the best. I don't it know. Was. I don't know where you guys stand in the in the realm of best WoW uh, raids ever. But ICC was is my number one, only because maybe it's because it was my my first one, really, where I was Aww. going. Well, it was like the first real one. Um. So and it was a great story, and it had such a killer last boss with the Lich King. Um. Yeah. But this is promising. Here, I'm really looking forward to this. Um. Yeah. Uh, Fist, what what are you, do you have any thoughts about this stuff? Um, I'm excited because uh, ICC is just so stylized and uh, iconic. Right. And I mean, Angora was awesome. And, and there was a lot of original content in that. But just like this, this is wow. You know, like this is Warcraft stuff. And I'm, I know this is going to sound stupid, but like I'm really looking forward to the card backs and the merch. Like I hope there's merch. Oh, like, man. Uh, merch? Oh, I didn't yeah. even think about merch. <laughs> ICC stuff would be great. I would oh, love that. I'm so, and, oh, God, that's so great. Right? Okay. Yep. And I, I'm wondering yep. if, if there's going to be an invincible card like Ooh. that never, ever drops. But if it's yeah. invincible, how will you see it? Uh, <laughs> I've never heard that joke before. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh, it's mm -hmm. painful though. It's painful. <laughs> so painful. So painful. The cool, th the actual cool thing about this is that we're gonna have this new thing, uh, this new card type, and it's a hero card, and it will change your hero, whatever class you're playing, whatever hero you're playing, it will change your hero from that hero to the Death Knight version of this hero. Yes. That is so stupid and fun. <laughs> it's it's brilliant because since Hearthstone came out, people wanted a Death Knight, mm -hmm. and this is such a brilliant way to do it. It's not yeah. a Death Knight class. Like you, whatever your favorite deck is, you can still be a Death Knight, uh, and it's awesome. So it, it so it's cool. going to depending on what class it is. They all have a battle cry. Uh, I think they all give armor. Some armor. They all give and some armor. And it gives armor, you a new hero power. And they get, you get a new hero power. Uh, and it depends on what class it is. But I mean, I think that's really cool. And just dumb. Yeah. So dumb <laughs> and fun. And, and oh, the Jaina so Death Knight looks really creepy. 
And I hope we get these skins in Heroes of the Storm. I want a Death Knight oh. Jaina skin. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. Oh. That would be really cool. And then you'd have to play Hots to get it, and then you'd have to play Hearthstone to get it. The and synergy. Be like yep. one of those cross things. We yeah. can feel the synergy happening already. Uh, mm -hmm. Another couple of things uh, about the new expansion is that there's going to be a um, uh, return of a lot of Death Rattle cards, and there's also a new thing called Lifesteal, where every time that, I mean, for this Lifesteal thing, every time you do damage, it will heal your hero. So... Nice. That's pretty cool as well, and there are spells where you can life steal a lot, possibly, um, if you really need the health. So it's actually a pretty cool mechanic, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and and uh, speaking of ICC, there the Ice Crown Citadel is going to be returning. Uh, well, is going to be coming to Hearthstone. Uh, eight uh, bosses, all bosses from ICC. You're gonna be able to they're all gonna be playable and they're all gonna be free. Yes, free. Free. Which is awesome. Although you do have to pay for the expansion. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. You have to pay for the expansion. Uh and if you pre order right now, it's uh fifty bucks gets you uh fifty packs plus the expansion. So And the More card back, which is sweet. More and awesome the card, card back. back. Yeah. And the card back and and all that stuff. But man, I tell you, I I have not been more excited for a for an expansion for, yeah. for Hearthstone. So this is a major fan service. Yeah, you think? <laughs> you think? Yeah, just a little. <laughs> I think everybody. I think everybody's like going, "Oh my god, what yeah. did you do?" And so hopefully this will bring people. Uh, if if you haven't played Hearthstone for a while, hopefully this will bring you back in, uh, get you excited about it, and and all that kind of stuff. I, I, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a yeah, fan of all this. You're excited. Yeah. Clearly. I was just kind of disappointed that Ben didn't rap again for this, though. So. Well, uh, right. Because I'm expecting you know they, that now. He can't. You know what they did do, though? What's that? What? They made another one of those sweet commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's Ben Brode interviewing Arthas for uh, Game Designer for Hearthstone. And it's fantastic again. Yeah, they're funny, but he's just such a good rapper, you know? It makes me feel cool because I'm like, I know this rap. That's it's not cool. as cool as jazz, but you know. Journey oh. to Angoro. <laughs> that one? <laughs> yeah, that one. It's it's good. It's really, really good. Um any anything else for uh Hearthstone guys? Okay, then I will move on to Heroes of the Storm. Let's roll. Yes. And for this, I figure that there's no better person to uh, talk about this stuff than the guy who actually does a podcast about Heroes of the Storm called Lords of the Storm. It's Gizmo. Hey, Gizmo. <laughs> oh, hey. Hi. Hi How's Gizmo. it going? So what do we got oh, going for uh, Heroes of the Storm? <laughs> oh, not too much. Just another hero in the game. And it's Stukov from StarCraft, <gasps> the really cool admiral guy with a huge hulking arm, kind of like Doomfist. Uh, except it's his left arm, not his right arm. Yeah. So and it's that's completely different. It's definitely weird. It's uh, yep. He's half man, half squid, or yes. something. So old Zerg. But yeah, yeah. He does have the uh, the Admiral Stukov skin, which is kind of like a Kraken. Uh, what was the guy from Pirates of the Caribbean? Uh, um, Johnny Depp. No, no, it was uh, <laughs> Squid Guy, Squid Face. It was. Uh, I had it, and then I lost it. Damn it! Wow, nightmare. it's gonna be something. It's su something super obvious too. And and I'm Davy sure Jones that this, was yeah, Davy Jones. Davy Jones, Davy yeah, Jones locker. It. Yep, it's Davy Jones. <laughs> um, so thank, kind of a thank cool you, chat room. There. Love you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I beat the chat room this time. No, I don't know. Um, but he is a support hero, which okay. is really cool. We've had these heroes uh, come into the game before that were never really playable in their universe. Like uh, Ariel, Diablo, um, and with those, you can kind of get a hint at what they're going to be just because of what they look like and kind of what role they played. I look at Stukov, I don't see a support. So the fact that they were able to make this um, kit for him that is amazing and probably going to get nerfed is really cool. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> and probably going to get nerfed real hard. So, But uh, he is in the game right now and along with uh, patch notes that came out today there's been changes to hanamura zul got a rework 
So a lot of cool stuff going Zool's on some there. New skins too. So Zool. yeah, yes, yeah, and they're uh, looking sweet. So yeah, it was pretty Zool to me, huh? <laughs> no? It was the skin that no. was in a splash art for Heroes, <laughs> like a, a couple weeks ago, and people were like, "Oh, I want that skin." Well, guess what? We got the skin. Hey, um, awesome! Yeah, hey. but so lots of cool stuff going on with uh, that. Mm-hmm. Because the game really needed more support. And I believe Blizzard said they were wanting to get like five or six support out this year because we need them. And this is the first one. And it's July. So, so, uh, <laughs> so that is, so he's support. And so his uh, big power is that he's going to like put his big uh, Zerg hand on somebody and just heal them to full or something like that. Oh, what he does with his hand is even better than that. Wow. Hat. Really? Um, wow. How <laughs> I, you know, Keep it clean. That's, that's all I'm saying. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. His Go ahead, guys. Are just like pathogens <laughs> that you place on one mm-hmm. person. They spread to people that are in the range. Uh, with his trait, you can detonate it for a burst of healing. Nice. Otherwise, it's a four and a half second heal. Nice. Um, he has a nice AOE silence that does damage. Um, so Very cool. He's cool. But his arm, That's this is the most important thing. His ult the only ult that matters here, he has an ult called Failing Swipe that swipes three times. It's like Brightwing's Emerald Wind, but not 360 and less cool. Massive shove, though. Uh, Stukov extends his arm. Probably, I guess, for comparable, we'll say Nova's snipe range. Okay. If it hits a hero, they're rapidly shoved until they collide with terrain. And oh. yes, until they collide with terrain. So when they announced this, there was a gif out on Sky Temple where the person was literally shoved all the way across the map. It took like six seconds. And it's awesome. So while you're doing this, you can't move. So Stukov is, there's a good chance you're going to die if you get a shove off that long. But he does get 50 armor while shoving an enemy. Uh, So there's probably going to be some really sweet plays from that, his uh, big move, H- he pushes yeah. you. He, he, pushes he pushes you around yeah. Yeah. a little bit with his like, big arm. Yep. Massive shove is like the best name for any move ever. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. <laughs> shove right. him massively. Okay. Um, All right. I'm really but, looking forward to uh, the videos of people finding really interesting and unique ways of using this move on the map. It's going to be right. amazing. I mean, not only for zoning out, you know, a tank or a healer. But shoving people back into ultimates like divas. Oh um, man, that'll be cool. That yeah. Bolt, but right. Self-destruct. Uh, right. You know, getting people off of boss points. It's, it's going to be. I, I can't wait to see it. Um, but if you guys are interested in this whole Stukov stuff, mm-hmm. and you've been paying attention to Blizzard's or here's the storm's Twitter, there seems to be some infection spreading around over on Twitch. Um, they've been. It's been going all day with different streamers. Mm-hmm. So check those out. It looks like there's possibly key giveaways for Stukov in these streams. Nice. So I don't know how long that's going on, but it's kind of cool artwork. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to gonna catch anything, am I? Um, I, I was a little bit worried. I can't make a promise. Right. That's, oh, no. <laughs> you're making promises. <laughs> right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Just, just, a- just do rolls with your left arm get it real big and then shove people away when they get close to you and you'll be fine that's not a problem okay it's not yeah. like blizzcon eh? it's just like going around <laughs> touching people with their hand getting uh, sick oh uh, yes. oh blizzcon <laughs> you're <laughs> to, not to that clarify. far away anymore blizzcon i look forward to to getting the con crud directly mm. after it'll be yeah <laughs> it'll be an amazing time and it's always it's not like you go there sick it's not like you ever go no. there sick Nobody goes I did there last sick. Year. Oh, so you were patient zero last year. I exactly. Thanks. Okay. I was very Thanks. sick last year. Yeah. Great. I, I hugged you like a hundred times. Or was that the year before? I don't remember. I'm still blaming you. Yeah. I think it was the year I'll, before actually. I'll blame you for both. Because I fine. always I always walk away and I'm and then two days later I'm done for like a week. I should just plan on that and not do a show like the week following BlizzCon. <laughs> just say, so you know what, guys? I'm gonna take a week off because I need I, I'm I need my sick time. So <laughs> so there. Uh real quick, let's talk Diablo. Which doctor? This doctor. Uh and Gizmo, you're very excited about this, so I'll let you do the announcement of uh season eleven. Yes, season eleven, twentieth, five p 
Pacific Ooh. in North America. And your, so your, your, I'll voice, be... your voice cut out there for a second. So it was uh, July 20th, 5 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific for North America. Yes. All right. Yeah, I think you were too excited <laughs> and you blew out your mic. I was. <laughs> I, let me just sh- sh- take my left arm, shove it a little further away. Whoa. Right. That was right. a massive um, shove. That was, yeah. a, that was a massive shove. Wow. Good that, was, that was incredible. Uh, <laughs> okay, and I think, that's, <laughs> I think that's it for Diablo. <laughs> oh, boy. But we have even more because I know that I, we were talking about Mythic Dungeons before, and those <gasps> are coming up right now in eSports. Ooh, I like it. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I that like one. that. I don't right know wing. why that one. Thanks, Brightwing. I love Brightwing. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about WoW. Let's go back to WoW and esports. And we have something else other than Arena to talk about, which I'm actually kind of glad for. Uh, and it was just announced today. Hours ago. Hours ago. Before, as I was finalizing the show notes, I looked down and I went, this is new. <laughs> so th- this, can you help me out here? Uh, and yeah. describe what this new thing is for people out there. This is called the Mythic Dungeon Invitational, and it's going to be a PVE esports, which is really cool. Um, so they're going to be looking for the best players in the world, and the players must play through a gauntlet of Mythic keystones and earn the best scores on the Proving Grounds. And the Proving Grounds are active July 25th to August 8th. And after those two weeks, you have to submit your top score to Blizz. And there's a forum on the WoW website. And then in September, the contenders will compete in the Mythic Keystone Invitational for a share in the prize pool. And each region's contenders will be a part of a single-day broadcast who will face a series of elimination rounds until two are left to represent their region on the right. global stage. Which is cool. Um, Which is and really so, cool. Uh, yeah, and the keystone levels and affixes are going to be determined by Blizz, and the first dungeon is going to be determined as, by Blizz as well. So right. basically, if you're really good at mythic keystone dungeons, you have a chance to like do something insanely cool with that. Yep. Yep. And I couldn't be more excited. This it, is because PvP is a huge gate to people. Like People are really afraid, not everybody, but a lot of people are just really turned off by PvP. But mm-hmm. this is a chance to just like showcase how good you are at playing WoW. Right. With, with no PvP at all. Right. And this is just a really cool spin on esports because it's it's more like watching a race than a than a well, than a I don't know. And the, and sport the, where people fight each other. Right. And this this actually solves a lot of problems. So and, and I think that we're going to see this uh the the finals at BlizzCon I'm assuming. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. And and this kind of takes uh place this this takes uh part to replace the raid run that they did uh, not last year, but the the pre- years previous. And uh, so I, I think they've nailed it. I think they've yeah. nailed what what all the different problems were. Number one, too many people for those raid races for, for BlizzCon. So it became confusing. You didn't understand exactly what was going on. They simplified it. There's only five people. You, you're doing a dungeon run <laughs> and you're doing a speed run and you're trying to make sure that you kill all the things perfectly. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's it. And as long as you can do that, who cares about the rest of it? And let's just go blast stuff in the face and see what happens. And exactly. I think that I think that this is really cool. Um, uh, a couple of things to note. There will be 32 teams invited in for the September stuff. The prize pool is a hundred grand. Uh, so that's pretty good for a first run at this. Yeah. Um, I'm digging it for sure. And I, I don't know, Gizmo, th- your thoughts on this? I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. And I believe a long time ago, I believe Sharku said something about Mythic Plus Dungeons let's potentially not, being something that's cool. I, I don't want not to give say, him credit. Let's not say, right, we don't want to do that. We I don't, don't want to give him credit. We don't want to make his ego even larger or anything but, like that. Lucky guess. I'll give him partial credit. <laughs> Um, if Partial. he in fact said it, I don't remember, but no, I think this is great. The raid races were super fun to watch, but let's be honest. How many people was it at that point? Was it still 20? It was, yeah. I think the R- regardless, la- I think the last time they did it was 20. Yeah. 
yeah re- regardless like if you know the raids you can kind of follow what's going on but really it's a whole bunch and if you don't know the raids you really don't know what's going on or if you're not a raider you just see a ton of health bars dropping and going <laughs> up right and you it's hard to distinguish mistakes with five people on each team you're going to know when somebody messes up so it's going to be easier to actually follow along and know who's you know making a, a risky move to to get out ahead or, you know, who's catching up, things like that. So I, I think it's going to be, and it, people are agreeing in the chat room, easier for the viewer to follow. Um, and just another, you know, cool, cool way to get some people making some money. I'm jazzed Absolutely. for this. Yeah. Totally jazzed for this. Me too. And it I, just, it, it opens up this opportunity to so many different people in WoW. Uh-huh. And it's, it's great. It's, it's like, it's almost like, because more people play PvE than PvP, right? In WoW? I don't know. I mean, so, they have the numbers on it, but I, I have no idea. I would, I would assume, assume so. Yeah. yeah. So, this, this is great. I mean, this is something that, like, I could potentially do. I mean, not now, but someday, like, if they keep this going. Like, now that I know that this is, is something, like, people can set up teams and start practicing. And, mm-hmm. and, and like... The, the urgency to do Mythic Pluses is, is even greater now, which is great for people just trying to run them for AP. So that's good, too, if you're trying to plug into something. So, right. Yeah. Right. And it's and, another thing that people can play on a team of five together. Mm-hmm. So yep. it's easier than getting a raid team together. You can come over, play Heroes of the Storm together. <laughs> I grab one other person. You can play Overwatch. And, and I really do think that they could probably just make that into a, a game in and of itself without WoW, just have like a dungeon run type of game. And maybe this is what Titan 2.0 is with Terry Crews. Uh-huh. Titan yeah. 2.0 with Terry Crews is just a dungeon run. That's it. That's, that's what it is. You, you know, know what they need now? That would be phenomenal. I'd love that. They need a blizzard decathlon i know it's not a decathlon Ooh, there's not gonna be 10 events heptathlon. but a team no. of like you could get a team of six <laughs> mm-hmm. and that way you can do Hexathlon. overwatch events a mythic plus dungeon <laughs> events a mythic pvp event a heroes of the storm event and a diablo four man hearthstone event. i mean you could do all the different games right yeah, i mean just make it, a, make it make it as some sort of a team sport and makes it in, make it into a hexathlon because that would be yeah. six, right? Um, yeah. So the the greatest plus, plus, Blizzard gamer in the world plus Destiny wow. two plus Destiny two. So heptathlon. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. And like they have to do it at BlizzCon, and they have to literally get up and go to a different computer. Oh, to play each game, and they have to like run and stuff. And then they have to do a high jump. Wait, no, that's yeah. not. No, nope, that's not like people with the Gatorade just handing them Gatorade. I don't. That'd be my job. I'd be like, drink this. I'm a mage. Yeah. I conjured it. It's they have fine. to go to different stations and do a different thing every time. Yeah, and like they have to like physically play Hearthstone with cards. That'd be great. Oh man, that'd be, that'd be great. It's too much work. Never mind. Okay. Yes, it is. It is. Plus, there are there are way too many people that are really good at uh, one thing, one game in particular, uh, and like uh, like. You know, we just had the Hearthstone Spring Championship, and uh, what's his name? Hoge? Is that it? Hoge? Hoge? I'm not sure what. I'm not sure how to Hoge? pronounce his name, but uh, that he he won. He beat Kalento, and now another four spots are are secured for the for the 2017 World Championship. That's pretty cool. And mm-hmm. I heard it was phenomenal uh, gamesmanship. I didn't watch it. I was I was in a cabin in the woods with very limited internet. Oh, that ex- that old excuse, huh? I, cabin I, in the woods. I really couldn't make I, raid. I was in a cabin in the woods. I, I really, I really was. I had like, oh. I had like one With Greg Street. One, he was one in bar. Cabin. But no, that was that was when I was in, when I was in Utah. <laughs> oh. That was that was awkward. Uh, but <laughs> but yeah, I had one bar on my phone, and I had like two internets. I'm not out of like a million internets. <laughs> two, I had two. two internets. I had two internets. So what did what could you possibly have been doing there? Nothing. Is that a euphemism? Like no, what's happening? That nothing. Oh. I was just I was I was not really doing much. Anyway, you can't do anything with two internets. This no. nope. I like look it up. See what you can get. I, internet I, inflation is ridiculous, see. and let's two see. gets what you nothing. Two internets. What can I do? And and now especially because all the. What can I? I'm going to type that into. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to go down a 
deep dark hole mm-hmm. on the internet. That's another. What can I do with two internets? Oh uh, yeah, a bunch of weird stuff popped up. Yep. Never mind. Don't do yeah. that, guys. Don't do that. Don't click it. <laughs> don't 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 click anything there. All right, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's also uh, uh, we also have to get to HGC, right? Because yes. stuff is happening there all the time. So yep. let's and... talk. Let's talk about that and finish up East Parts. For crying yeah. out loud, before we uh, really go off the rails. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go through this kind of quick. I just okay. wanted to mention it this week. Um, we are in the second phase here. But there have been some kind of mix-ups in the standings from the first phase of HGC. We actually have Team Freedom in first place for North America, followed by Gale Force, and then No Tomorrow, which was in the Crucible uh, and barely made it out. Well, I won't say barely made it out, but they were you know, up for losing their spot in the HGC. So it's awesome to see them move up into the third place after some roster changes. Uh, Meanwhile, you know, Roll20 and Tempo Storm, which were the two top teams from phase one, are sitting in fourth and fifth. So this phase is still early on. There's plenty of time for them to move up. uh, But no, no team in North America has locked a position for the clash yet. And then over on the EU side, Fnatic is the only team to lock or secure their spot for the... uh, western clash that'll be coming up here again so uh there's always some good games going on there if you guys have not checked out some heroes esports i definitely suggest doing so it is HG- quite a good time hgc is just a good time just in general mm-hmm. i mean the I mean, production value is amazing it's, and it's, it's proven itself as a quality uh stream for sure um definitely. lots of great games and stuff so uh make sure to check that out uh let's see Anything else? Because I, I think that, yeah, we're way over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, we had a lot to talk about. There was a lot going on this week uh, over the last couple of weeks. It's like we went away for uh, the 4th and for uh, Canada Day. Yeah, thank you. Happy birthday, Canada. Thanks. Happy Happy, happy birthday, America. Happy birthday, America. So, so there. <laughs> um, and now we're back and, and then we get info dump. Yep. It's just, it's just, that sounds I awful. I know. I know. It smells really bad. Okay. With that, I think we're going to get going. Uh, but before we do, I'd like to talk to you guys and, and see what's up with you over the next, uh, I don't know, a little bit and see what's going on. See how people can contact you. See if you have any shout outs or anything like that. This. Um, now, lagging balls, uh, still uh-huh. going strong. Oh, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that. Still planning on doing that this weekend, I'm guessing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Unless something any, terrible happens. Any anything else anything else going on with you or how how can um, people find you? You can find me at this 3 on Twitter. Um, but everywhere else, um, just search for lagging balls. But just be careful when you do that. Right. Like when you Google search two internets, don't when you Google search lagging balls. Don't just be Don't careful. do those together either. Two internets do. plus lagging balls, don't do that. You could blow a, an internet hole right. into the internet, <laughs> just a really deep, dark hole in the right. internet. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. Everything at Lagging Balls, <laughs> or just search it. It's fine. We do a show weekly. It's kind of like this one, except with more swears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. It is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Gizmo, how about you, bud? Yes. So we, of course, uh, have Lords of the Storm tomorrow night yep. at 9 p.m. Central. And we have a very special episode this week. We are having uh, Nate Lamouge, uh, who is a hero designer, and he actually designs Stukov. Uh, We're going to have him on for an interview tomorrow, an exclusive interview, to ask some, obviously, Stukov questions, along with kind of the state uh, of support in the game, because there's a lot Mm -hmm. of questions that the community has. Uh, So that's going to be really neat. That'll be about the first 45 minutes of the episode. And then we will get into, of course, kind of the regular show uh, tomorrow night. So if you guys can't catch that live, which I would definitely suggest doing if you can, um, it'll be on our podcast feed, Lords of the Storm, Twitch is Lords of the, or twitch.tv slash Lords of the Storm. And I am at all the things Gizmozord. Right. Uh, what I would really like to know, and maybe you can work this into your interview at some point. Maybe not. Maybe uh, <laughs> just think about it. And that would be this. Uh what were some of the abilities that were cut on the floor oh. that dealt with his Zerg hand? Yeah. Uh, his giant Zerg <laughs> hand. 
I, I am, actually, that's that's one of my questions I have is along those lines. I'll see if I can kind of tweak I that. I'm so there. curious oh. about all of that stuff. Like, if he can massively shove somebody, what else can he do with that it's, hand that's massive? Right. What exactly. type of anime did you watch to get your tentacle <laughs> inspiration? <laughs> all and of them. with that, I will play uh, the, uh, this music. We'll get out of here. <laughs> all right. Uh, by the way, you can find me at Pat Crane and all, all the things. Okay. <laughs> and you can please talk to us at any time. Make sure to give us criticism on this show. I'm sure you'll have it. Uh <laughs> Uh, you can always email convertrate at gmail.com. You can call and leave comments and questions on our raid line, 612-787-RAID. That's 612-787-7243. You can join the Bazooba Guabo Nation by heading over to convertrade.com, where we have show downloads, Discord infos, videos, audios, guild stuffs, and more all over at convertrade.com. We're also on Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, I still have it listed as iTunes, but it's Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube, and, of course, all around the two internets. <laughs> Both of them. Uh, Convert to Raid is produced and distributed by Signals Media. Make sure to check out all of our friends at the Signals Media All-Star Network at SignalsMedia.com. Uh, that's going to do it for the show. Uh, Fist, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah. Gizmo, thank you. Uh, Twitch, Twitch guys, uh, thanks for coming out. And uh, your conversations are always very, uh, very fun to watch. And thank you guys, no matter where you are. Uh, thank you for joining us for yet another show. And we will see you again, probably next week, most likely. We should do a show next week, Gizmo. Or we should. Yeah, we should. We should. We should. Do that. Right. All right. With that, we will go. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> hey, that's copyrighted.